Welcome back to the Fate of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes weekly D&D 5e campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running our game as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm von Kessel, the human swashbuckler rogue. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis, playing Rudy Whitaker, the shifter eldritch knight. And Joe Horman, playing Wrath, the Asimar warlock. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the very first time, welcome. We're the Dungeon Dudes. Kelly and I post new videos every other Tuesday and every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything TTRPGs, including advice for players and guides for GMs. So check us out at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. You can also join us on Tuesday evenings when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio only podcast as well. And with that, let us return to Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible. While simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war. The power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all the fate of Drakenheim. Welcome back to the fate of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, Wilhelm, Wrath, and Rudy had gone on a brief mission to deal with some relatively well-armed, uh, explosively well-armed um, brigands that were causing no end of consternation for the Duchess of Geldstadt. Having realized that the leader of these brigands was in fact Black Coffee, a former member of the Ochtenwald Irregulars and a old war companion of Rudy's, um, who had rigged the entire base to blow, um, our heroes got into a little bit of a kerfuffle. It was a recruiting mission. Uh, Unsuccessful? <laughs> one that ended with a wet snap. <laughs> Having successfully um, disarmed and diffused <laughs> the uh, the um, the explosive situation, um, our heroes now remain at the camp where the slain body of Black Coffee, um, mushy with a snap neck lays on the ground um, and the fuses have all been disarmed and what remains of Black Coffee's uh, band, most of them have fled from the mass suggestion spell cast by Wrath. Uh, <laughs> although a, a, and a few f tried to fight over the flying potions that he left behind, but uh, most now are looking to flee. What will you do? Round them up. <laughs> We're taking them in for uh, justice. Deep interrogation. Well, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. <clears throat> if y'all would settle down for a moment, I'm gonna project out to them. We still have a deal on the table if you're interested. Um, give me a persuasion check. Ooh. Fifteen. Um, of these survivors, um. Several of them uh, say, just don't even call back. They don't even respond. They just run. Um, but the few that are still close by the tower um, drop their weapons, um, seeing the ranged magic that Wrath has, gauging, eh, probably not going to be able to outrun that. Um, and they uh, and, and they raise their hands and say, we give up. Now listen, 
initially we came to see if, I mean, of course, we were looking into the idea that there was some theft and mischief happening around here, but <clears throat> seeing as y'all were pretty good at what you do, we are looking for potentially some uh, soldiers to come and join us, some band to help us with our mission, if you're interested in hearing what we have to say. The, f there's only five of them left. <laughs> um, and they kind of look, look back, um, and one of them, a, uh, um, a tiefling man, he turns back and responds, are you serious? Rudy, the, these people aren't soldiers, they're criminals. The only soldier here is, and I kind of gesture towards the pile of body that is <laughs> black coffee, or was black coffee. Uh, he was the only soldier. The, the rest of these are just brigands and bandits. Uh, I was a soldier! <laughs> you sh Quiet, you! <laughs> Listen, your majesty, if, uh, if I've learned anything, the difference between a brigand and a soldier is just the direction you point them in. If you give them orders and they're willing to follow, skills like theirs can be put to good use. Uh, I gesture towards the tiefling man. Um, you, uh, what is your speciality? He, he looks over at you, he smiles, and he takes his finger and he draws it across his neck. We could have use of those uh, with expertise and less ethical means. Um, we have those that are out to kill the king. We have uh, a less than ideal adversary in the Queen of Thieves. Uh, we could much use your assistance to gather information. Um, and of course, we would spare you your lives. Or you can end up like your former boss here. The the group of them look, look around and the, the tiefling man says, what are you paying? Uh, standard soldier rates. Uh, we have our forces for Westamar. We're putting them together. Uh, more than you were getting paid as a bandit. The tiefling turns to the the uh, the um, the bugbear beside him and says, "What what's a standard soldier rate?" <laughs> uh, we will ensure that you are well equipped, uh, paid upon completion of each mission. Um, means for lodging. Um, we have resources, but you must understand that your distance from the king would be great. Also keep in mind that if you do join us, rather than fighting against the law, you'll technically be working on the side of the law of Westamar, and therefore any murder you do is thumbs up from the nation. Um, right? I wouldn't put it like that. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> well, um, give me an insight check. <laughs> is, that, is that how this works? Is that how being a king works? It's not like, murder, it's protecting the nation. <laughs> it's a, that's what war is. Um, it's a 12. As you spoke the, those words, you could, you, you see them nodding like your read of these these survivors is they're just going to say whatever they think is going to keep them alive long enough to ditch you. Mm. Mm. Rudy, I think we should uh, bring them back to the town. Uh, maybe hand them into the local authorities. I don't think that they're going to be loyal mm. to our cause. Mm. And I don't think that they're going to serve the king. They might just as well backstab us. Mm and try to flee at the first chance they get. All right, we bring them in then. Yes, if you come with us, free lodging, free food, and more money than you could ever imagine from the wealth of the nation. Give me a deception check. <laughs> uh, that's gonna be a six. The, the group of them Look at look at each other, 
and they say, if you're going to haul us in, just say that you're going to haul us in. All right, come with us or Wrath will blow you up. I will destroy you. Fine. Uh, I'm also going to start taking off uh, Black Coffee's boots. <laughs> 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 I'm sitting on the ground like a like a toddler and I'm ripping off his boot being like, I will kill you. <laughs> his lace is off. Um They're those really annoying boots with like the extra layer of laces. Uh, yeah, yeah, like double like probably because yeah. he's flying with them. It's yeah. probably good they're, to be they're very boots. well made. Yeah. They're, yeah. They, you probably want to have like a really good uh feel. Like you wanna make yeah. sure they're like on yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> I wanna start I want to secure the prisoners, I guess they are now. Yeah. But then after that, I want to start like going around the camp and seeing if there's anything salvageable that we can take with us. Um, as you scan around the camp, give me an investigation check. Oh, 16. Okay. Um, the explosives are probably salvageable if, if a group of people with knowledge on how to deal with them, came back and spent the better part of a week like digging them up. So there's there's a lot of equipment here that is sal salvageable, but it's more than what the three of you could carry in, in the short term. Like this, this is a campsite that has been building up for a couple weeks. There's a lot of equipment, there's a lot of material, there's a lot of explosives, there's a lot of, of, of good stuff, but it's the type of thing where it's going to take time to carefully pack it, carefully take it up, and um, put it away. Mm. However, um, in amongst all of the items is a bandolier of magical explosives. It is, an, it is effectively a necklace of fireballs, and it has six globes on it. Ooh. And are they precariously dangling from <laughs> yes they're 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 they kind of look like clay pots that are on a leather band bandolier um that are attached with cl with met metal clips um and they all the individual ones could be pulled off and thrown and they function as a necklace of fireballs that's pretty cool as our local demolitions expert uh <laughs> i suppose you should be wearing that bandolier uh, could come in handy. I put it on and I say, you never know when you need to blow something up. Mm -hmm. Come come handy if you're out of magic. It, it suits you and I gotta say you look like 5% more badass. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. It just, you keep, it's good. <clears throat> also, uh, investigating around the, the grounds, you do find uh, a total of eight potions of greater healing. Ooh. Oh, oh. Uh, what does everyone have, actually? I already have three. Um... <laughs> Rath has six. Oh, my God. I have three as well. Uh, why don't you both take three, and then... Uh, you take two? Uh, sure. Right. Also, maybe we can share some with our other comrades. <laughs> yeah, who have... like beyond beyond that, there's, there's a fair amount of mundane equipment. Like, if there was anything... If you're looking for, you know some extra arrows or extra swords or bolts or javelins, you'll find them here. Not the best quality, but serviceable. Mm. Um, they have their fair share of provisions um, and they do have some of their ill-gotten gains that, that, are, that are stacked up. Um, plunder, a lot of the plunder that you can see that is amassed here is mostly in the form of trade goods that they've stolen from um, traveling uh, traveling caravans and whatnot that are, that are bringing things. So you can see that like most of the provisions, like the the, the flour and any of the other, other food that are around, definitely stolen. Mm. Um, there's a fair amount um, that they, that, and, and you're actually aware, aware of this, there's a fair amount of tanned hide, leather, and furs, because uh, there is a pretty prominent uh, industry, like, uh, in the Octonwall, that's a pretty common thing of hunters gathering animal skins and whatnot. So there's a lot of it that they've stolen. Mm. Um, that seems to be the predominant thing that they, they've they've got. And um, but in the area, you'd think that Geldstadt would also be known for the glitter wash river and the gold, gold panning. There's a little bit, but not much. Mm. Um, and there there is some coinage 
uh, around that is clearly stolen. Mine. <laughs> uh, Rudy, I think that it's important that we return the stolen goods. No, she has a great question. How much money? <laughs> We're going to return the stolen goods I vote, to Galstead. I vote we... I never get a chance to use this, but I took skywriting <laughs> as a ritual spell. I want to write in the, in the sky above the camp, free stuff. <laughs> With a big arrow pointing down. <laughs> I was thinking we could put it on. We could give it back to the people. Yeah, we could bring free. it back to them. No, no free it's too much. Who's going to show up for free stuff? Bandits. Uh, the more bandits. We're we uh, <laughs> bandits come here and then we wait. <laughs> Raph, what we're going to do is we're going to get Elias Drexel over here. The, we can start heading to our next destination Well, we leave behind some hooded lanterns to salvage this camp. Mm. Gather the explosives, the equipment, the gear, return the stolen goods. Uh-huh, uh-huh, Galstad. I'm riding on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and we will... Remember, Gelstat was struggling. Right? Yeah. I think we should put a little bit of wealth back. Not directly to the Duchess, maybe. Maybe a little bit, but... Yes, she, the is, she is poor. She told us. <laughs> she, she, you told her, <laughs> but... She knew. <laughs> and, and we will bring these, these folks in for uh, questioning and do justice. And uh, if you could question the... Um... I grab the corpse of Black <laughs> Coffee, and I pick him up, and I want to use my brand new Eldritch Invocation uh, to speak with the dead. Okay. This is going to be weird. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to prop him up against something. Like, in a chair. Put him in a chair. Okay. Does he just talk, like... or is he, like, he come to life? Um, the spell grants the semblance of life. Um, Die him up. So, um... <laughs> is he, like, bent neck lady sort of vibes? Like... Yeah, <laughs> so propped up in, in, in a chair, as you finish casting the ritual, there's kind of, like, this snapping noise as, like, <laughs> as the broken spines kind of writes itself. Um, <laughs> the, um, the, the, most of the body just moves and shudders and, and, and spa spasms as the magic flows through the corpse, um, causing the eyes to glow and, and this eerie octarine light coming out from the nostrils, the ears, and the mouth that is animating the corpse like, like arcane energy using the body as a puppet. And it <laughs> I have my crossbow out. Oh, <laughs> I don't like it. Black coffee. You may ask this corpse up to five questions. Mm. Um, and the remember, um, and Bruce says, says like, you have, you have its mind for five questions. Remember, it only knows what it knew in life, and the answers will be brief, cryptic, cryptic and the corpse is under no compulsion to offer a truthful answer if it recognizes you as an enemy. So you warned. Oh, cool. I disguise self as... Who were... Who is like another... An Octomold or regular? No, but I would have to see them. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> um, I'm gonna disguise self as the tiefling man that I had met earlier. Okay. Rath, we should ask him, see if we can find out where the other irregulars are. Mm -hmm. Um, what is your first question? <clears throat> Black coffee. Uh, where is the queen of thieves? Now, the the corpse responds. Give me a deception check to sell the illusion that you're using to impersonate the tiefling. Uh, I get a twenty-seven. The corpse exasperatedly says, "Sai, I told you." We aren't on good terms. We need something to get back in our good books. Sir, what if we look for more of the Octonwall, the regulars? Where are they now? 
bunch of them got tied up with the Duke of Todsfeld. Ugh. Don't think there'll be much help to us now. Where is that extra cache of of stolen goods? We need to fence it. That's my little secret. Sorry. <laughs> Darn it. Um, I'm going to step back um, and attempt to confer with uh, Rudy and Sebastian yep. before uh, for the well, last two. Hi. Oh, sorry. Well, um, sorry. I just couldn't recognize you. With, uh... <laughs> The the, gla the glasses goggles. Um, so, you heard. That's bad news if they're in Toddsfeld. If the irregulars are being held in Toddsfeld, then uh, that's a problem since the Duke has it out for the irregulars. I know that. Mm. Who knows what he's be doing to them now? If he's already got them, or maybe they might have escaped. I don't know. Well, um,. We'll get some scouts to maybe see if they can get ears on the ground mm. for the whereabouts of any irregulars around Toddsfeld. Um, we have two more questions to ask. Yes, the, 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 the spell can only hold for a little longer. What about um, asking about, I don't know, resources? Where's the most powerful of their... Uh, Explosives. We can at least get something out of them. Also, I'm wondering that that's a great question, and then we could also ask something along the lines of uh, he mentioned that they needed to do something to get in the good books of the Queen of Thieves. Yeah. What was their operation? Yeah, I like that. Mm. Something like. Okay, I have an idea. Trust me. Okay. I always trust <laughs> you. Sometimes I trust you, but in this instance, <laughs> yes. Um, sir, sir. Did the Queen of Thieves put out a put out a word to get Wilhelm, Wilhelm von Kessel? No, but was pretty sure she'd pay for him. I had one more, and it was on the it's on the the tip of then, my then brain. It, then it continues. If not, I heard there were some weirdos out of that, that school, and all broke. That had it out for him. Uh, yes. Yes, someone else might be trying to uh, kill him. Uh, do you know anything about uh, the assassination plots against him? That king's gone pissed off half the kingdom. So <laughs> how many enemies do you think he has? How many hand fingers you got on your hand? That's you. Ten. Um, and and with that, the spell breaks. I release him back to his. Well. Well. Um. What did we learn from that? The Todd's fell. That is interesting. Do you think your comrades are in trouble, or are they willingly working? I don't think so. I think the last time we were there, we caused so much trouble that I wouldn't be surprised if the. Duke is looking for some revenge, and if he has some of them, it's probably not happening in a good way. I think we definitely need to send someone to look into it while we go around. I can't leave him to the to the Duke. This might be a case where we might have to split up our our, our group. The, we need to hit Helig as quickly as possible. There's important matters to discuss there. But also, we need some of the Hooded Lanterns to stay behind and clear this camp of all of its materials that we can use. Mm. But we also need to send somebody reliable to Toddsfeld, not to cause any trouble, but just to get word on the Ochtenwald regulars who might be imprisoned there. Mm. That way, if we know where they are, we can perhaps plan a rescue or figure something else out. Mm. Yeah, I think if if there's any chance that we can get him on our side, we gotta go to Toddsville. I would like to recruit as many of the Irregulars as possible. Uh, 
Preferably without <clears throat> snapping all of their necks. A lot of them are good folks. I mean, Black Coffee was the exception, I think. He was a bit... He was one of the folks that was a soldier for doing the dirty work, not for the right reason of protecting the country. So I think, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd still like to give him a proper burial, if that's all right with you folks. Of course. The, uh, yes. Um, the Duke of Toddsfeld, what is your relationship with him? Uh, where do we stand in terms of his support of you as king? He's going to be the biggest problem, uh, seeing as he directly opposed my father, and in response, we sent an elite crew, the Octonwalder regulars, to see to it that he was not a problem anymore. And uh, let's just say that that went, I guess, in a manner of speaking, from a certain point of view, better than expected. Mm -hmm. uh, but from the Duke of Toddsfeld's point of view, uh, a devastating blow to his kingdom. You know what? I, I would say that, if anything, we did more damage to the people of Toddsfeld than we did the actual Duke. And it, that, it doesn't sit well with me what we did. It was a stain on the Civil War for our side. Our side tried to do as much as we could with diligence, courage, and trying to stick to what was right. But the events in Toddsfeld are a dark stain on what my father put forth. It was not our intention to drown half of the innocence of that city. Well, we saw what, what, the, what the result was later, that delirium, that sickness that we caused. All those families, I think, we do owe something to the people of Tottsville, but we don't owe that Duke nothing. I just think that if we, we may have to make a decision as to the Octonwall, the regulars, or the Duke, if we intend to free them from his prisons, if that is the case, that will only create more barriers to his support, unless our intention is to force him into submission. I I think we need more information before we start going in there assuming things. We don't know what the state is of the irregulars, you know, going based on Black Coffee's word, you know. And there's no telling if he knew the truth or not. Rumors, sounds like, but we need to make sure these rumors, whether they're true or not, we need to figure out what, what the source of it is. And if we do go after them, maybe we have to make sure that you are distanced from it. Mm. Any vocation that you have in the freeing of said prisoners could have a lasting impact. I we mean, just pretend like it. In Toddsfeld, freeing soldiers who fought for my father and fighting against a known enemy of my father, I don't see that as a negative. Okay. And I'd like to avoid outright war or exceeding violence. Um, but as we can see, and I again gesture to the black coffee now in a chair, uh, sometimes when I say let's avoid violence, it doesn't always go the way I want it to, so let's just we will be do clear. what we must. I, I do not apologize. I don't expect you to. Any of what I want that to be on the record. You did what you thought was right. And I did what I, was necessary, I, you're, sir. He yeah. says, pulling the boot on <laughs> Just tight. <laughs> 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 like lacing up. Yes, yeah, sitting on the ground, just pulling the boots on. And I did what was necessary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are sweet. Are they have the winged boots? Yeah. I love them. Oh, it's okay. It's so worth it. Who else can I kill for their stuff? What do you got? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got a taste of it. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, let's not lower ourselves to these thieves uh, level, all right? I can't be lowered, and I power it. <laughs> I, I begin to float. I grab you, and I put you on the ground, and I say, 
Yeah. No, we sorry, must keep sorry. ourselves grounded in times of, right. you know, yeah, yeah, planning and, and moving forward, all right? Like, yeah. he just got flying boots. How can you expect him to stay grounded? Such behavior is beneath you now. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is beneath me. <laughs> oh, come out in like mom mode. I'm just like, no, just because you got some fancy new toy doesn't mean you need to go off showing off. I'm we use sorry. them when we need to. Use them I'm in times sorry. where it's necessary. <laughs> Let's bring these five in and be done with this place. They can. Uh, can we walk them? Back? Yeah, we can. We can walk them back. Or we have a wagon. No, and a we'll horse? Is there a horse? <laughs> yeah, you're. You can uh, load them up in a wagon and bring them back. And as you make your way back to. Um, uh, back to Geldstadt, um, heading it towards the Sindau Castle with your bounty in tow. Um, the captain of Ursula von Sindau's guard um, has a bit of a shocked expression as you approach the castle grounds and says, I didn't expect the king to be a bounty hunter. Well, spent a lot of years helping out the uh, general public with uh, bandits, brigands, and monsters, so it's just doing my part to help. And he says, and he, he points, that one's a murderer, that one's assault and battery, murder, robbery, horse theft, that one, uh, you don't want to know what that one did, murder, murder, assault, yeah, you, we, we don't need to get it, but... There, there's, there's actually a 250 gold piece bounty on each of them. Oh, wow. As for Black Coffee, was he wanted dead or alive? Oh, he pulls out the sign. <laughs> <laughs> please say dead, please say dead. It's, it's dead or alive. Uh, how much for him? Oh, okay. Well, we'll to, he says, says there was a, you, you knocked over his whole band. A few of them escaped, but uh, there are several that didn't make it out of the fight. Well, there's not much. I'll have to talk to the Duchess about what's left. What's left in the coffers? But uh, yeah, if you're if you're claiming the bount the the bounties on them all, there there is a there's. Well, we add that all up with black coffee. You're looking at a couple thousand. Maybe, maybe this is an opportunity to have a great gesture with the Duchess and re solidify your friendship. A gesture of goodwill. Sir, perhaps we'll waive the bounty. I understand that Geldstad needs support right now, financially. Instead, you and your men should head out to the camp that was located there. There's a lot of stolen goods and gold that I think should be recirculated back into Geldstead. What I ask instead of the money, there's a number of explosives, equipment, and gear left at that camp. I will be sending some of our hooded lanterns, and if we could take those for ourselves, and all of the stolen goods are yours, and you may keep the money. Thank you, Your Majesty. I shall see to it promptly. Mm. There's Thank writing you. in the sky above it. You can't miss it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Very clear arrow <laughs> pointing. Heading back to Sindau Castle uh, from your, your afternoon expedition, um, Ursula von Sindau is speechless at uh, at the act um, and thanks you profusely. Um, she she continues. I'm a little embarrassed that that the king has seen to such a small matter so personally, but thank you, Your Majesty. I greatly admire your bravery. And it will make a fine story, I imagine. You know, 
I think it's important that we help each other out. It was no problem and there's no need to feel embarrassed about it. I was happy to help. And if doing these small tasks gets us more leverage and also more equipment, then it's just going to help the nation out as a whole. I see this being the start of a great partnership. I hope that you will enjoy my hospitality for at least another evening in my ingratitude. We'll be leaving first thing in the morning, and um, I might have a few people stay behind to clean out the camp, but yes, we'll stay one more evening. Wonderful. I will make sure that the dinner preparations are made properly. Wonderful. Are we able to then uh, meet up with Elias and kind of relay all this information? Yeah, yeah. Um, with the full crew assembled, um, perhaps before before supper, you can have a meeting with who who would you like to have in on this conversation? Uh, probably Elias, Eldrick, River, uh, <coughs> Sebastian, Veo, and Pluto. Although they don't need to say much. Okay. Um, but they should probably be there so that we can discuss uh, matters going forward. Um, who else is with us? Uh, um. Like, is Rickard here? Rickard is, is here as well. Uh, and um, there is a contingent of the Caspian forces as, as well, uh, but Saul is not here personally. Okay, so we'll invite all of the important people into the room. Um, yeah. Um, the Ursula von Sindo provides you with one of her antechambers uh, to use for this purpose. It's a large, um, it's a large kind of salon parlor room uh, with a roaring fireplace and um, uh, several of, of her staff bring some wine and uh, drinks and cakes um, so that uh, Veo is satisfied. <laughs> Specifically <laughs> fish be... cakes. <laughs> There's gonna have to be a lot of fish cakes though, but. I imagine less. in the whole uh, layout, like everyone's around, and then Veo's just at the snack table, like the whole time, <laughs> like yeah. just standing beside the. Yeah. <laughs> I'm behind it, like I look like I'm serving, but really I'm just <laughs> eating. Mm -hmm. You see Sebastian go over, pour a glass of wine, hand it to Pluto, and then he takes the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Elias crosses his arms and says, Overall, I think things went quite well with Ursula von Sindau. I must commend you, Wilhelm. Well done. I think we've made a strong ally here. We've done our part to show our good will. And also, we've acquired a lot of explosives in the process, which I think will help. And by foregoing the bounties, I think we've gained more in the explosives and equipment than we would out of the gold. I'll be honest, I was certainly hoping that Ursula von Sindau was going to be in a better financial position than she currently is. Uh, but in the past, she has been a very generous supporter of the Hooded Lanterns. And I feel a little guilty because for years, her coin was one of the only things that kept the Hooded Lanterns even running mm. at, at all. She's been loyal to the idea of this kingdom for a long time. Uh, and I think it's because, you know, for her, when she was very good friends with your uncle, um, the old king, he visited here quite a lot because he liked to indulge, if you know what I mean. So I think that she does that out of respect for your family. And I think, without telling her that she owes us one, I think she's very aware that should the coffers be back in good position here in Geldstad, she will continue to support us. She's an important voice, at the, at, at the very least, especially given all of the run-ins that we've had of late. Maybe uh, she'll be good to spread the word to the other dukes or duchesses that might be teetering on whether they should support you or not. Her support are. means, a, if, indeed, her support means a lot. And um, knowing that she backs you wholly and completely is a very important bargaining chip in dealing with some, with, with some of the others uh, as well. I'm particularly concerned when we meet with the Duke 
of Altbrook. The Altbrook and Geldstadt were two of the closest allies of your father during the Civil War, and Altbrook bore the brunt of the armies of Totsfeld. He paid a heavy price, and I worry that the, the Duke of Altbrook might be a little bit more reserved about throwing in with us once again, just because of the cost it cost him before. In a similar fashion, the Duke of Dransmond remained neutral throughout the Civil War. <sighs> but maybe the fact that we have the support of everybody once again will mean that he will be more committed to us. Dransmond has already voiced a support claim for us. We haven't talked directly to the Duke, but... Mm. Um, what was the daughter's name again? Was Verona. Verona von Baden said that she supported our claims and would talk to her father on our behalf. So we do have, not a guarantee, but a shoe in at least in, in Dransmond. What concerns me the most about Dransmond and Valentin von Baden is Dransmond has prospered over the past while. It's also suffered, as you've seen firsthand, and had its fair share of problems. But for a lot, for the past 15 years, Dransman has been the unofficial capital of Westamar. <sighs> Valentin von Baden is a powerful and influential man. And if anybody has the capability to actually challenge you. It's him. I have a few ideas on how we might be able to deal with that situation. I see that putting Avon Baden on the small council could be very important. Offering them really as high of a position as they need. I, um... There are other options out there as well for uniting the Von Badens and the Von Kessels. I think, though, where they might feel the sting is if they're sent our trade when it comes to delirium. And, of course, that's one of our primary focuses, is to make sure that it doesn't continue to hurt this land. But, you know, where they're situated, we know that it's coming in and out of there. You know, they've prospered before Delirium, and this is what I think everybody in Westamar needs to realize, is before Delirium showed up, no, we weren't a perfect nation, but we got by, and as much as certain people are prospering, other people are suffering, and I think it's all out of balance. The goal is to restore balance to this nation. And if I can convince people of that, even the ones in a stronger position now, we will offer them their support. We will offer them the protection of an entire nation. And I will offer the Von Badens political power in Westmore. Mm. And they, also, well, maybe we can figure out in, in a way, how can we offer them something that's going to be just as prosperous? Could be political power, could be something else. We don't know yet. We'll have to think on that. Nevertheless, what is the next destination? I think that we need to divide and conquer at this point. Uh, there are three tasks that I think need to be taken care of. The three of us, and perhaps Sebastian, Pluto, and Veo as well, um, will start riding for Helig, Ursula von Sindel, voiced that it would be in our best interest to get there quickly and ensure a collaboration with Helig was in the cards. They have the strongest military. And so uniting with them is very important, but mm. we also have word of Rudy's crew, the Irregulars, possibly being held captive in Toddsfeld. Now, 
I, we have the steel fangs present, and we have the hooded lanterns. Out of the two of you, I think the hooded lanterns are probably better suited for espionage and intel gathering. Now, with respect, says Rickard, Duke Toddsfeld is going to be suspecting the hooded lanterns sniffing around. Mm. He's not going to be necessarily... Now, it's known that we've been working for you, but me and my guys... We can move through spaces that your hooded lanterns are going to get recognized in. Well, I just didn't think stealth and not being noticed was your forte, but do you think you and your crew could gather intel? It ain't about stealth. It's about the word on the street. Mm. Hmm. Mercenaries talk to each other. And if something's happened to the Octagon Irregulars, me and my guys will be able to find it out. It's about hiding in plain sight. Well, it seems appropriate. Rickard, I, I agree and I trust you. And so uh, if you could put together maybe a small crew, we don't, we don't need to make any noise. We don't need to cause any scenes. No. We just need to know <laughs> where the irregulars are. Some ground rules. If they're there to begin with. Again, we're going off a rumor. Let's see if that intel holds up. All right. We'll set out first thing, head over to Tosfeld, find out what, what we can. And then I'll meet you back in Dransmond. Very well. And Elias, uh, perhaps you and a few of the Hooded Lanterns, we have a camp full of explosives and equipment mm. that needs gathering. So, I mean... I have some thoughts about that. I can command the Lanterns, and we will move these materials, as well as any other materials that Ursula von Sindau can provide, to a staging area outside Drakenheim. Afterwards, we can come up to Altbrook and meet you there. Very well. It will be a several day journey to Helig. Um, and this is where Sebastian chimes in. <laughs> I might be able to get us there faster. Ah. How? Well, it just so happens that, as uh, Pluto likes to call it, we have a magic school bus. What's a bus? Beep beep. <laughs> 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 well, a bus is the uh, what the kids call teleportation these days. Oh. We call it bussing around. Fancy magic terms. I don't, I'm not up to date on what I, the kids are saying these I days. I don't know. It's it's one of those youth things. Um, I don't but, play around in all the 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 terms and slang and however these kids are saying. Me being only 31 years old, I'm quite hip with the children, <laughs> and I can get us to Helig like that. No problems. No questions. No issues could possibly go in any direction here. I can get us there. I mean, I've seen you work. And I respect all your ooh, magic and stuff like that. Yes, it's a I... brand new spell. <laughs> yes, so no problems. No. What's the worst that could happen, right? Right? That's fair. Listen. Where's Helic? Uh, north. Cool. North. north? <laughs> Point. <laughs> can somebody describe it to me? <laughs> well, There's I... a... Uh... Helig is well known for its shrines to the old gods. There's a, an ancient pyre and stone circle in the center of the city. Oh, that'll do. That's good enough. Uh, stone pyre, center city, north. Yeah, I can get us there. There's a <laughs> river and Eldrick have a visible look of concern on their faces. <laughs> As you casually <laughs> describe teleporting to a location you've never been before. I have... I'm, I'm drawing a little picture. Does it look any... And there's like a little stone tablet on my page. Is this good? No, it doesn't look anything like that, but... <laughs> and I go over here. I trust he knows the severity of traveling with the king and the consequences of what that means. I have been testing out the ability to move more people... Pluto! <laughs> Yeah, buddy. <laughs> How many times have I moved you from point A to point B 
quickly. Countless. Yeah, exactly. But usually you've seen it. <laughs> yeah, now all that I'm doing is I've been really practicing moving more people further. The logic is the same. The magic is the same. I'm just getting more Isn't powerful. Isn't there some sort of magic point that you can go to where it like, ooh, feels like connected? Yeah, but the Academy needs to set those up and I haven't set one up in Healy. But don't worry. There is an alternative, of course. If you don't have a actual teleportation circle as a destination, and unfortunately the Academy does not have a dedicated circle near Healy, an object associated with a particular location allows you to transport unerringly to wherever that object was taken from. So, who has a collection of sand from the beach in Healing? You know, some people put those in bottles when they're on vacation, There's they collect them. He really hasn't been to Healing. I thought it was near the water. There's no beach? How do they tan? <laughs> Just because it's near the water doesn't mean there's a beach. Uh -huh. I thought it was a prime vacation spot. It's in the north. <laughs> it's covered with snow for three quarters of the year. What about the other quarter? Okay, no beach, no sand. A rock? Does anybody collect rocks from Healing? Pluto? Healing rocks. Uh, yeah, let me check. Uh... Might be my other, my other pockets. Um, I don't think I have any. Eldrick River, <laughs> Healing Rocks. <laughs> Can you? Anybody? Anybody in the room? What about like a document? Like someone signed something from Healing? Like a? Did anybody go shopping? Anybody buy some clothes? <laughs> uh, a scarf, perhaps? It's it's <laughs> it's snowing there three quarters of the year. They anybody buy a, a scarf? Hat. They must have a hat. A hat surplus. Like a, they export hat. <laughs> River, I like your scarf. You got any? Is that from Helig? Is that a Helig scarf? No, it's not, Sebastian. <laughs> hmm. You'll just have to do your best with it. Again, I draw a different stone tablet. I got it. We're gonna aim draw for five the stone tablet. And see which one's the closest. Yeah. Okay. I draw five different shapes. Which one? Now. <laughs> Before we go, if it is snowing up there, you should probably get yourselves equipped with some uh, warmer coats. Is this going to be a like outfit change montage? <laughs> I'm just going to put something warmer over top. <laughs> like... Sebastian gets like a animal fur cloak and his purple scarf billowing. I like that. Now, and... to be clear. A, a it wolf. will just be the six of you going to Helig. Yeah. Yeah. That's all you can take with your spell. I mean... The Academy can't open some sort of portal that we can all just immediately go there with. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? We're just going to go. We're going to talk to them and we're going to leave. There's there's no issues. Uh, we're going there for a political, boring old night. We'll meet you guys in Alper. <sighs> Very well. Well then, I suppose the king will be traveling with the most elite guard we have. That's right. Is this overkill? <laughs> Is this overkill? Uh, um, We're needed for political matters. Right? Busted heads. <laughs> Don't be forgetting there. <laughs> Eldrick, River, and Elias just kind of turn to each other and, and, and wince. Listen, the entire Hooded Lantern Force isn't needed in Helig. The entire... Steel Fang Force isn't needed in Helig. Yes, you're sending your best troops because I might say what's the worst that can happen, but we all know that something could go wrong. Not with the teleportation, of course, but well, I don't know. It is his cousin, is it not? It is, and there's assassins everywhere, and uh, he needs us. Very Plus, well. I, I just want to bust us over. River says, Wrath, Sebastian, do either of you know this? You still have the Sending Stone. Yes. Great. So we can be in touch at the very least. Yeah. When will you be setting out? I think after dinner. After dinner? F first thing in the morning. Oh, yeah. It's the okay. morning. Is this breakfast right now? Or is this dinner? This is dinner. Oh. Dinner. Van. Right in the, <laughs> right we'll right in the morning. <laughs> we'll go after breakfast. Don't worry. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm just a little bit like, um, after we eat, the food is delicious here. How about we just crab cakes and fish cakes and yum. Please, um, when you do go to healing, please give my best regards to the Duchess Sophia. She, um, her father, Gregor von Sneestrom, was a good friend of mine. He, um, the old Duke died in the Civil War. And Sophia's only 20, um, so she's quite young for, for a duchess, but her father was a fantastic man. Um, he had, be, before I took up the office as the Lord Commander, in his younger days before he became the Duke of Healing, he was the Lord Commander before me. Wow. Did he do a better job? He taught, taught me everything I know. Does that include stabbing people? Anyway. I, I didn't I'm say sorry, that. sorry, I don't understand the nuances of your relationship. <laughs> well, never mind that. <laughs> I kind of so, punch you in the shoulder. I'm just like, be a little bit more respectful. He worked hard. But he had a lot of difficult decisions to make. Yeah, so for, for clarity, Gregor von Sneestrom is... Wilhelm's mother's brother. Cool. Thus making um, Sophia Wilhelm's first cousin. Co yeah. Yeah. Cousin. Yeah. Cousin. Yeah. Big family. Let's go hang out with your cousin. Yeah. What? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. All right. <gasps> So we're teleporting there without anything. Is that what we're doing? Close. -ish. I'm sure Sebastian has it under control. He said he did numerous times. I am interested to see someone with such power screw up so majestically. What makes you think he's going to screw up? I don't know. He just... I've heard things. It happens sometimes. Um. <laughs> oh. Hi, Vale. <laughs> <laughs> you walk up beside the two of us. <laughs> sometimes it uh, doesn't go as planned, but in the end, it always works out. I'm sorry. I thought Sebastian was like a hero of Drakenheim. Oh, he is. He is. But heroes, not everything is, you know perfect in their journey. They go through ups and downs. Should I be concerned about this no. tele- <laughs> No! <Maybe>. No! <laughs> it's fine, man. We're good. We're gonna just- <laughs> I just, just- Hey there, King Willy. Here, Plutes? listen. Listen. Plutes with the glutes. <laughs> You noticed! He's been working know. on it. So, Look, Sebastian, you know, for all his faults, he is able to always come through. Mm -hmm. And, like, worst case scenario, one of us ends up inside <laughs> of a mountain. But, like, that's like one out of six. So, I like those odds. Yeah. I'm deeply concerned. <laughs> Look, he's technically a bus now. And you've heard what he said about buses. Yes, it's a term that the children are using for teleportation. There you go. Look, this guy has touched the heart of delirium. That is true. Moving six people, you know, a couple hundred miles. Piece of cake. Yeah. Easy peasy. With my understanding of magic, it should be a piece of cake, uh, but I've been proven wrong before with the ability to summon anything or do anything. Uh, Wrath continually disappoints me with his inabilities at magic, and I'm hoping Sebastian can prove better. <laughs> yeah, he's not Sebastian. That's the thing. Very well. Yeah. Uh, you have made me feel mildly more confident in this. Don't worry, sleep on it, okay? You're gonna be fine. We'll go in the morning after breakfast. Will my gold mm. tooth be a problem? You know what I can do? I can make sure that maybe we send out a few hood lanterns to search around and see if there's anything Healig, uh, in, where are we now? Geldstadt. Geldstadt. <laughs> in Geldstadt. 
just to see if there's anything that we can get. Maybe there's like, I don't know, fur coats or something that the that the Duchess has that are from Helig. Very well. Okay. I'm gonna look at the little tags and see where it was. <laughs> also, I hope you two enjoyed right, your Julie, night on the town. You can roll me 2d6. Ooh. Okay, let's see. All of us? No, just gel 2d6. A one out of two. Okay, the Hooded Lanterns do not, unfortunately, Ooh. they don't come up with anything from, from Helig in, the, in their search over the night. Oops. But the evening passes well with good merriment and it's, it's a, you know, get your pre-flight jitters out, out of there. <laughs> um, the, the Ursula von Sindel shows her great gratitude in, in the evening's affairs and in the morning, it is a gray bit of rainy morning with a little bit of morning fog. Hmm. As the sun breaks and you take your breakfasts, um, do, do we get a chance to rest? You get a well? full rest. Yep, I full rest. And well certainly, if if there's anything that like uh, um, the one thing the hooded lanterns do assemble and that our slow von Sendo does assemble is cold weather clothing uh, and provisions for you all. Um, I, in the morning, as Veo, um, I don't know what we're, uh, walking into, you never know. Um, I want to make sure that we do this as a team, and I bellow a command out using my, oh. um, <laughs> what is this, my com Lord Commander Seal, um, and you get 20 temporary hit points, just in case. Wilhelm walks into the room with, uh, he's like, I should give a speech. And he walks in and, and Veo's giving a speech and he just like <laughs> slowly. <laughs> <laughs> so do all six gain temporary hit points? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's up to, I guess we're, we're the only ones going, but um, it's up to 12, I think. Yeah, up to 12. All right. Um, I'm just giving the pep talk. Like, we can do this. We're going to keep Wilhelm safe. We're going to go make great relations. And then we'll come back and it'll be right as rain. <gasps> Who's with me? Okay. Thank you. And then I just go over to Sebastian and I just say, this fog isn't gonna, do you need full visibility in this weather or uh, are we fine with a little bit of rain? Eh, it should be fine. Why? Just, I don't know how bussing works. Me neither. This is going to be my first. Wait, are you Veo right now or Rudy? Rudy. Rudy. <laughs> Rudy, can I level with you? Please do. Okay, just between you and me. Don't tell anybody. This is going to be my first time casting. This Your spell. first time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're usually not that animated. <laughs> Why do you say that so loud? <laughs> just. <laughs> yes, it is my first time seeing the weather like this in Gelstad. Uh, it's usually very sunny here, Raph. If you kill us, my cat will eat you. I haven't killed us yet, and I'm not going to today. Famous last words. Well, as you all gather together and join hands to teleport away, uh, the, um... Where's your hand? Okay. Oh. <laughs> All right. Kelly, do you want to tell us how the teleport spell works? Yeah. Uh, this spell instantly transports you and up to eight willing creatures of your choice that you can see within range or a single object that you can see within range to a destination you select. Uh, there's no other parts to that spell. They just go. All right. There is more. Uh, the destination you choose must be known to you. I've heard of healing. <laughs> And it must be on the same plane of existence. Check. Your familiarity with the destination determines whether you arrive there successfully. I drew a picture. <laughs> Is there a permanent circle? No. No, 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 read the next sentence. <clears throat> the GM rolls a D100 and consults the following table. It's really important to know what's on the table. <laughs> Is there a permanent circle? No. Is, do we have an associated object? No. No. Am I very familiar? No. Seen casually? No. Viewed once? No. <laughs> Description. <laughs> Light. Yes. Yes. So there is a 1 to 43 chance of a mishap, a 44 to 53 chance of landing in a similar area, 
a 54 to 73, that's the window for off target, but 74 to 100, and we're there. I get a 17. <laughs> Miss out. Oh, no. Okay, so that means I have to roll again. Wait, but what happens with the mishap? No, 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 we're gonna resolve all the mishaps at once. Oh. Because <laughs> I'm sure there's gonna be more than one of them. Uh, I get a 68. 68, that is off target. Okay, so there is a mishap and you land off target. We're most of the way there. So Sebastian, as you start casting the spell, you know, that's the, the, at the ending of Guardians of the Galaxy, where they're all holding hands. Yeah. And, like, parts of them are kind of disintegrating. It's kind of like that. But it hurts. But it a hurts lot. a lot because you're all... The spell is basically... With your shadow magic, your teleport spell is basically disintegrating everybody, sending them in little particles through the air at lightning speed, and it is extraordinarily painful. <laughs> I, we all link hands in a circle. There's a swirl of octarine whirlwind that forms around us as my eyes start to glow. And all of a sudden, all of our flesh starts to rip off. And I'm like, I think it's working! And like, you see all of us get reduced to skeletons. And then the skeletons disappear. And we, we feel all of it. All of it. And then somewhere... What is the reaction of people viewing this? Um, uh, I, I my here? skeleton face turns to Eldrick and I'm like, I'm doing it! <laughs> <laughs> Eldrick's <laughs> like, no. <laughs> yeah! Okay, so you all take 3d10 force damage. That's going to be 15 force damage that you all immediately take. Great that we have those temporary hit points. <laughs> okay. We might need that speech after. Okay, so I'm just gonna read this out because you actually won't know this, but he here we go. Off target, you and your group or the target object appear a random distance away from the destination in a random direction. Distance off target is 1d10 times 1d10% of the distance that was to be traveled. Uh-oh. Which was over 500 miles. <laughs> oh my. Oh, so wow. if you try to travel 120 miles, you land, okay. Um. Okay, so five and a three on two d tens. Uh, on two d tens. Okay. It's <laughs> great. This is great. So you're gonna be off target by eighteen percent. What's eighteen percent of five hundred? So that's like uh, ninety miles. It's like ninety. <laughs> Miles. I don't know the conversion. <laughs> Let's see. So we're going to be like, oh, that's kilometers. That's kilometers. That's why I'm asking. You made oh, it 80% no. of the way there. But the problem is, is that it's 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 like in a random direction, too. Yeah, I roll it. We can end up in the water. Oh, no. <laughs> the egg is on the edge of the ocean with, with dangerous snowy mountains on one side, ocean on the other, forest below it. Kilometers. Trust this guy. <laughs> uh, <I love> it. <laughs> and we all reform like skeleton muscle, like yeah, it's good, yeah. and it feels just as painful. Oh yeah, we're back definitely in. either in the mountains or in Tonsberg, ton uh, or in the or ocean, in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> or on this peninsula up here. <laughs> okay, we're either in a snowy peninsula, in the mountains, in the ocean, or, or in a mountain. different town. You appear in the mountains. Woo! Uh, Cool. Yay! Good thing. In a snowstorm. So, yeah, we all reform in the swirling. Is this healing? <laughs> this place sucks. <laughs> I'm in so much pain. Is everybody's flesh on their bodies? Hands up. Everybody's flesh intact. I think some of my fur is missing in patches. <laughs> it sure is, Veo. It sure is. Everyone has, like, strange burns and welts. Guys, I think this is... Is that the stone tablet? I point to like a rock. <laughs> oh. It's uh, it's snowing heavily. Healing, is that you? <laughs> Are you calling out to the town? I don't know anybody here. I just figured somebody would say, yeah, it's healing. No one's here. Um, you, I think 
I this, think you missed. This town's pretty boring. What is every? I guess there's a snowstorm. People are in their houses. I start looking around for houses. <clears throat> yeah, there's Hello? no houses. Well, uh, <laughs> seems like we uh, didn't quite get to our destination, did we, Sebastian? We're probably close. I, I like, I like, I can't see in the snowstorm, but I assume it's this way. I'm just pointing in a random direction. I don't know. The best you know is that Helig is about, um, uh, Helig is roughly a hundred miles away from the giant shield mountains, or the giant frost mountains. And you are in the midst of a snowstorm with great icy peaks arranged like the back of a spine reaching up towards the north. It is in, in midday. You know those day, daytime snowstorms where it's not dark, it's very bright and there's snow, there's snow everywhere. There's a pine covered for, forest not far from you. You can see the, the spine of the mountains reaching up to the north. And so you between the six of you, you, you can relatively calculate that, yeah, you've probably landed about a hundred, a uh, hundred kilometers or miles, sorry, a hundred miles away from, uh, uh, to the east of Helig. Uh, there are two things that we should note if we're in the frost, is it the, fr uh, this? The giant frost mountains. If we're in the giant frost mountains, two things to note. Number one, this is prime hunting ground for giants who don't always get along with humans. The second thing is there is stories of a great white dragon that roams these mountains. Um, so perhaps we stop yelling about Helig and start heading there quickly and quietly. But do we know which way? Can Wilhelm, with his... I don't know if history counts for geography, but... Sure, sure. Um, can Wilhelm's knowledge of the area help him kind of pinpoint... Yeah, give me a history check. Would it help if Sebastian and Rath create a tiny hut to shield us from the onslaught? That would certainly help storm? in the short term. Yeah. Um, so, I also... Yeah. Can I help you with a nature check? to look at like the moss on the trees or something <laughs> as Veo. Can Veo help? Yeah, sure. It, it, Veo, uh, give me a nature check. 21. And Wilhelm, give me a history check. 18. Putting together what you know of the geographic area and the history of the region, you're very confident that Helig will be to, traveling to the west. There's not a lot of civilization or notable landmarks in this area. It's a very trackless expanse. Fortunately, with a tiny hut to uh, um, stay in, um, that will mean that your exposure to the elements overnight when it is the coldest will be survivable. Um, and probably it'll be upwards of three to five days travel, um, maybe as much as a week, but compared to, but. Strictly speaking, it would have taken you a month. Like, it's a month of travel by foot from uh, from Geldstadt to Helig as it is. So, it saved you weeks of travel time even to arrive off target. Uh, pitch. I have a pitch. <clears throat> You're welcome. <laughs> you were pretty close. What if we try again? You think we should try again? What if we end up further into the mountains? You would have to do so tomorrow because that was his seventh level spell slot. Mm. Yeah, I'm... It's, you, we get a good night's sleep and then we travel as much as we can. We get our bearings. Let's see if you can maybe from the peak of the mountain see. <laughs> if you can see it. <laughs> um... And have a better understanding of where we need to teleport to. I mean, we're here now, so we might as well spend the day traversing towards the destination. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think between our magic users keeping us warm with whatever fire magic we have, 
making sure that, you know, Veo can guide us in the right direction with Wilhelm, you know, combined you two knowledge of the area. We trudge forward. Maybe Veo, you know, we can uh, make sure to have some sort of magic to keep us quiet as we go. We can avoid some of these giants, maybe this dragon that's known around here. I think we can get through. I say we set out at once. There's no point in dilly-dallying. If uh, Sebastian's magic replenishes, do, do we trust Sebastian? Do we, we almost died coming here. I, what if we end up inside the mountain or he rips us to shreds? No, he did do that and then he reassembled us. Yeah, it hurt. Well, maybe on a clear day from the top of the mountain, maybe we can get some perspective and, and some views across uh, across to it. Maybe that'll okay, help. There's a risk. Uh, although, um, your eminence? Is that a, a majesty? Wilhelm. Wilhelm? Um, a time you know, we must, we, we can't wait. I mean, we were day. going to take months to get here. Hmm. Five days is far less. Is nice? I'm not saying it, it's out of the question. I'm just saying that we should assess the dangers and we should... Uh, it hurt a lot. Bruce is cold. <clears throat> he does not wish to stay in the cold much longer. Put him in your coat. He already is in my coat. <laughs> <laughs> Additionally, what we can do is send Houdini forward if Bruce stays in your coat. Houdini can deal with the cold. Um, <laughs> To make sure we scout ahead a little bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the gusting wind. How will the group of you proceed? Oh, one more thing. Uh, can y'all magic users make some sort of like snowshoe? Is that a doable magic? I know we can't do oars, but maybe snowshoes <laughs> as a potential. Uh, yes. We can make some snowshoes. We have the ability to. Yes. Uh, craft some wood. Yes. Wow. Uh, that would be helpful if we could help us travel through, maybe at faster speeds. All right, so snowshoes from the magic folk. Rudy, I need you to chop down some trees. And then I need you to... I'm sure there's a tree already to chopped down somewhere. Probably just use those trees to build snowshoes. Are we just on a mountain, though? Like, are we on, like, just like a... Uh, uh, isn't it like a, like a desert of snow? Um, or is you it... are You are not quite on the mountains proper. Um, um, so... There is a, there's the expanse as the mountain rises, and then there is a great uh, coniferous forest uh, that is snow covered that kind of um, wells up around the bases of the, of the mountains. Um, and so there's areas of frozen lakes and open sort of tundra that you can pass across as well. So it's not, per, it's not entirely forested, um, but it's, um, so the terrain is, is rough, Reaching, but there is wood. There you go, Rudy, and I, I, I'm going to minor illusion some uh, snowshoes in front of you. I mean, are they, I reach for them. Are they... They're intangible. I mean, real ones, not... Okay, okay. You didn't say that. You said, can I make snowshoes? And the answer is yes. All right. Well, for now, I guess we'll have to do without. <laughs> and so, as Veo, I'm going to cast pass without trace on okay. us okay. to make sure that we're silently through the snow and we don't leave any tracks. It's creepy. And the six of us venture okay. towards where we hope Helig is. I mean, it only lasts an hour, but we try. Well, with that, as you set out on the first day of trying to get back on target, I will have you all roll me a d6. And you need to roll two because you each are playing two characters. Great. <laughs> wow. Well, this lovely Ooh. dragon hand dice. Six and a three. A six and a four. Two and a three. Okay. As you travel through the first day, Jill, you can make perception checks for both Veo and Rudy. Okay. Perception? Yeah. Okay, so this is for Veo. Uh, 19. Mm -hmm. And for Rudy... Uh, 18. Okay. Turns out that Veo notices it first and points it out to Rudy. But as the afternoon winds down, a snow fox has been following your group. It's very hard to see. Mm. 
that a snow fox has been following your group for the past several hours. And following not in like a, what I can tell is probably not a natural snow fox. Give me a nature check. Can I pick which character? Yeah. Who would they Okay. Uh, 24. And the first time Veo sees the snow fox, it darts away. And you're just like, oh, that's adorable, like an adorable snow fox. And then you see it again. And the second time Veo's like, that's a different snow fox. It's the third time that you're positive that it is the same snow fox and it is following your group. Hmm. As if it is spying on you. Um. I go over to um, Pluto and I say, uh, Pluto, we have um, some company. Where? Don't look. (laughs) Behind us, snow fox following us. I don't think it's a snow fox. How big is it? Size of a snow fox. (laughs) Yeah, how big is a snow fox? Yeah, so so it, 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 it is a, a small, um, like, white fox. Okay, so is it dangerous? Like, are you worried that it'll eat us? I'm worried that it's not a snow fox. The queen of thieves. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pluto, hold on a sec. I go, I go up to Wilhelm. <laughs> <clears throat> Wilhelm. Yes. Um, there's... Veo, like, where'd you go? <laughs> <laughs> um, there's been a snow fox following us. Same one. Lots of miles. Should um, I? Should I look? <laughs> don't look. Okay. <laughs> don't look. Um, I have a feeling that it's not a snow fox. <laughs> How big is it? <laughs> a gesture the size of a snow fox with my hands. Do you think it's dangerous? Do you think it's trying to eat us? <laughs> I just had this conversation with Pluto. Um, I think it's not a snow fox. The queen of thieves. <laughs> I heard you say something. Was it the queen of thieves? I think we're being followed by the queen of thieves, Pluto. Actually, it could be something worse. There's these... Black Jack Mel? Who else is there in my group? <laughs> There's these mysterious hands. Unseen. They're like, they control things. Like marionettes. You, Maybe this is a puppet. It's probably a, a forest druid or something. Wait, so uh, you think it's a druid. You think it's hands. Yes, invisible hands. Invisible, okay. But we don't think it's the Queen of Thieves. You were thinking druid? Why would the Queen of Thieves be up here in the mountains? Is there a chance that it's just a snow fox? No. At first I thought that was so cute. Just, running around behind us, but three times seeing the same fox. And normally I would say maybe it's a hungry fox, but there's easier food than us. Hey, are you guys talking about that snow fox? There is a snow, yes, a snow fox. Do you guys think it's the Queen of Thieves? No! <laughs> no! Because <laughs> that's what I, I shout a little bit too loudly and it echoes around. <laughs> no, it's not a snow fox, or it's not the Queen of Thieves. Fail, shh, we're trying to be quiet. <laughs> Raph, what do you think? Snow fox. I, I heard think... there's a snow fox. <laughs> <laughs> Trailing us. Um, what do you think, Rudy? Maybe the queen of thieves. <laughs> I don't know. Could be anything at this point, but... Little... <laughs> no, it's not the queen of thieves! <laughs> okay, hold on a sec. I want to turn around and I want to... Fire a warning shot at this fox. Okay. <laughs> to yeah. call it out. Okay, are you aiming to hit the fox or aiming to warn the fox? The cl- Is the fox around a tree? Um. Yes, it is. I aim for the tree. Okay. Roll it in. I hope I don't hit it. Um, I'm not going to use sharpshooter for this. Uh. 28. The arrow sails right by the snow fox and it leaps 
and dives back behind the snowbank. And I say, <clears throat> we know you're there, you might as well come out. Queen of thieves. <laughs> or other thing that you might be. It's probably not the queen of thieves. Oh, we don't know that. Snow fox. It's uh It might be the Queen of Thieves. <laughs> you wait. Um but it doesn't it doesn't come back. Snow Fox, my name is Sebastian Crow, and I like animals. They're they're okay in my books. If you present yourself, we will not harm you. We will feed you. Veo has lots of snacks. She she's probably willing to give up one or two of them. <clears throat> no. She's willing to give up three of them. Zero. Three snacks. What if we need them to survive in the wilderness? What if the snow fox is trying to help us? I mean... What if it's not the Queen of Thieves? I know that you were really adamant about it being the uh, Queen of Thieves. <laughs> Raph wants to uh, use uh, one of his ritual spells uh, to speak with animals. Okay. And he begins to approach the... Uh, the fox has run away. It ran behind a snowbank and it's run, run out of sight. So oh. it's no longer visible. So Wrath is going. <laughs> what does the fox yeah. say? <laughs> um, <laughs> what are you? Wrath like walks. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. So with all this calling out, I'm gonna have all of you roll me a d6. Is that six Two? again? Six yeah. Six. Yeah. Two and a four. Two and a five. A six and a three. Okay. Yay. We're good. I've never really communicated with uh, snow foxes before, so I think that was a great first attempt. Mm -hmm. As you, um, as you call out, uh, um, <laughs> um, Bruce speaks to you. He says, "It is a spy, no doubt. A spy seeking something." but it doesn't know what it's looking for yet. I left something here long ago. Where is it? Buried deep. If you find it, you will find it. Can you show me the way? The way We'll find you. Okay, I, uh, Wrath is gonna sort of become very, like, self. He's gonna sort of turn inwards and begin to sort of take in his surroundings. As you do, give me an arcana check. Sort of like a, like an in, internal, like, meditation. Uh, 17? You feel a flash of magical energy from the woods, but it's a different kind. And as you turn to look, you see an owl perched out on one of the trees. It looks at you, nods, and flies away. I sprint after it. Okay. Rat. Well. <laughs> you see, rat just, <laughs> just gone. Rat, he like is this way. I point in the other direction. Are you flying after it? Uh, after a few steps, yeah. <clears throat> like, uh, uh, does the boots of flying give you a fly speed equal to your walking speed? Yes. So the owl flies faster than you can. You, you. Um, uh, I begin to dash. Okay. It is also dashing. Okay. Um, so as you fly out uh, and into the air, um, the owl is flying through the forest line, um, and the rest of you see see this <laughs> wrath flying after an owl. Um, and Rudy, for for a moment, the owl you it look you're like, why is wrath chasing Houdini? Because the owl looks almost exactly like Houdini. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, 
but um, he, he flies after the 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 owl. Um, like, Rath, we already have an owl. Leave it. <laughs> what, do you think it's a spy or something? Get back here. What do you do? I'm gone. I'm after this owl. Okay. I'm, I'm sort of... The owl is flying towards Helix. Okay, oh, that's perfect. good. Um, what I'm going to have you, have you do, because the owl is outflying you, yeah. is the owl is going to try to hide. Ooh. Um, and so I'm going to have you give me a perception check against its stealth. How far away is the owl from me? Like, let's say just in this moment right now. Um, I'm going to say that the the owl, um, because it has a fly speed um, much much higher than yours, um, it, it its fly its fly speed is double yours, yeah. so it's you're quickly losing ground to it. Um, so it's been a couple minute minutes now, and it is probably about five hundred feet away from you. Okay. Um, then I'm going to attempt this perception check. Okay. I get a fourteen. You lost it. I'm scrambling around, looking. I slowly begin to descend towards the ground, but I'm trying my best to keep, like, to kind of be within the stillness of the, mm -hmm. of the, the area. Yeah. Because I want to see if I can pick up its trail again. And I'm just gonna slowly sort of walk towards where I believe its last location was. All right. Give me an investigation check. Not great, not great, not great, not great, not great. Not great. Three. I kind of build that. <laughs> yeah. You look around, and Bruce says to you, she's gone. I want to ready an action. Okay. Um. I have not given up yet. I, I thought Hex Hex doesn't let me know where. A no, that's is. Hunter's Mark. Yeah, I'm going to continue to wander the forest. All right, as you continue to wander the forest, what is the rest of the group going to do? Can Sebastian go try to catch up with? Yeah, yeah. I I come trudging through the through the snow he doesn't fly faster than people can move on foot. he just has the advantage of being yes. able to fly over the foliage yeah he doesn't yeah. have to deal with the snow Rath. Yeah, Rath. Rath. i lost it how okay the other people don't probably understand this but okay owl is a magical are you on to something do you need to catch this owl yes okay but Why? i don't need to catch it i need to follow it why didn't you use magic? I did. I can I can make you twice as fast. Maybe maybe if you'd used a binding spell on the owl. I even have a familiar. Crowley hops onto my shoulder. He might be able to fly faster than you. If what do you, you need? If you can help me find this owl, I will bestow any gifts I can upon you. I must any gifts? find this owl. Okay, well, if it's important to you, it's important to me. Because we're, uh, I don't know, are we friends? Yes. Cool. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm going to cast Haste on Wrath. Mm -hmm. uh, shadowy tendrils, I put my hand on, on, on your shoulder, and shadowy tendrils wrap around mm -hmm. you and kind of invigorate you. And then I'm going to put my goggles on. And I'm gonna snap on the gem of seeing and start like binocularing around, trying to see any trace Ooh. of magical energies. I also want to send uh, Bruce uh, high up into the sky, and in hopes of also sort of scanning the area for any. I send Crowley as well. Be movement. Before you go fly off somewhere. <laughs> I'm standing there right now. Um, <laughs> Rudy walks up and says, Wrath, I need your help for a second. Um, I think if there's someone, if there's something going on, maybe we need to disguise Wilhelm. Is that something you can do? Mm. I put another cloak over top of him. 
What? Is that Put it? a mask on. <laughs> move your move your eye patch to the other eye. They'll never know. What? Sorry. What are we? Hi. I. I do, I do not have a means to magically uh, disguise him, mm. Uh, mm. but I do have. Uh... Don't worry about me. If. I mean, also don't worry about the owl. What are we even doing here? We need to get to healing. As you speak, Sebastian, give me a perception check with disadvantage. Uh, that's going to be uh, 19. Wow, okay. With your gem of seeing activated and your goggles off, you see in the distance, fluttering from branch to branch, the true form of this owl. It's a young woman. She's far away, but she, as you pick her out in the distance, she's clearly still watching you all as she, as she flies as an owl from branch to branch. Breath. She is wearing um, animal hides. Um, and she is lightly armed with a pair of scimitars. Um, and notably, um, her, herself, though, um, she has a cloak that is a red cloak made of foxtails. Um, and, uh, she kind of wears, um, like, uh, uh, she has very bright red hair. Um, and, um, is carrying a court uh, is carrying a gnarled staff as well as her scimitars. The queen of thieves. You know, know it's the queen of thieves. I knew it. Um. <clears throat> Wrath. Mm. Don't look. We need to catch them off guard. They are in the trees at one o'clock. I'm going to get you closer, and then you're going to use the speed of shadows okay. to catch up to them. Yes. Are you ready? Uh, I'm really good at teleporting people. But always just a reminder, like, let's maybe not kill them, ask some questions. We should find out what the heck's going on here. You heard Rudy, kill them. Yeah. And I'm going to cast um, Dimension Door to Dimension Door Wrath. 400 feet with you with me and then set wrath loose with haste <laughs> to chase yes <laughs> all right uh roll for initiative then in that case what do we got uh veo has an 11 rudy has a 21 okay sebastian has a 22 and Wilhelm has a 10. We're really far back. The group's really far back, right? Yeah, they're kind of split. What does Wrath have? Uh, Wrath is 14. And Pluto's 20, but he's probably sticking back with uh, Wilhelm. Um, okay. I, I can't see him doing anything All right. drastic. So yeah, I think in this, in this, Rudy, Wilhelm, and Pluto are kind of pretty far back. I think Bayo is as well, too. Yeah. Or I'm yeah. with the group. It's mainly just the, the these two. So, Sebastian, you're actually first to act, so you're able to teleport um, uh, teleport Wrath up to this owl, which very shockingly flutters with with with, with its wings. Um, and the, um, yeah, it's very, very shocked. Yeah. So we, we disappear into a shadow and mm -hmm. boop. Wrath, what are you going to do? Um, I'm going to cast mm -hmm. Hold Monster. Hold Monster, okay. What's um, the save DC? Uh, 20, and it's from my ring. Okay. I get a 25. Oh, she's so good. <laughs> In the shocked moment, the owl reverts back into her human form and you get a really good look at, at her face. She reaches over and places her hand against the tree 
beside her and casts a spell. She's using tree magic, Raph. <laughs> Stop her. Get her. Okay, in that case, she casts the spell and she slips yeah, I, I into the tree that. and disappears. Oh, wait, I could have. Wait, I could have stopped her. <laughs> <laughs> ah, she's gone. They never told us how to deal with tree magic in the in the academy. I wasn't expecting that. I people can walk through trees. You got a good look at her face. She was garbed in animal hides, and you noticed the one prominent thing that you noticed, Wrath, was that she was wearing a symbol of Arwen, the Moon Hunter, the deity, um, and her. With the shocked expression on her face, there was still something really familiar about her, in particular to you, Raph. And you're trying to place it. You won't give me perception checks. Hmm. <laughs> he knows nothing. I got uh, a two. I got a twelve. She kind of reminded you of Rudy. She had foxtails for a cloak. That's pretty cool. I try to look inside the tree. Like I'm trying to like, yeah. I imagine it's like even one of those ones where like it's a little bit exposed at the bottom. I'm trying to like look inside of it. Do you know how much magic I used just to get us here and she disappeared into a tree? How far back are we? 500 feet back. Like you're all We're catching up We're through now. the snow. Yeah. The, the magic she used doesn't, like, continually open a portal of a tree. It's just, like, it, she... If you give me an arcana trip check, maybe you can figure out what spell it was. I get a 20... I get a 30. I'm going to jump into the tree, okay? <laughs> just go straight okay. first into it. Um, you got a... Sorry, what did you get? 30. The spell she cast was transport via plants. So had you gone right away, you could have followed after her, but you hesitated, so... Too late. Why did you hesitate? I don't know why. I literally gave you the speed of shadows. <laughs> you did nothing with it. Nothing. I'm taking it back. You're gonna feel really exhausted, by the way, in a few minutes. You're gonna be real tired. When you exert that much, it it it, it has a toll. So sorry about that. Garbage. Um. She kind of looked. Like, um, a fox, because of the fox tails, and also the fangs. You're really caught up on that, the fox thing. I want a fox tail cloak. I, uh, something is drawing me towards her. Yeah, that was obvious. I need to continue my search. If you must go, take the others to Pilgrim? Healing. 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 Okay. <laughs> Sebastian turns around. <laughs> and, um... We're not leaving Wrath behind. I begin to, uh sort of continue my, 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 with my the, stroll through the, through with, the forest. With the spell that she used, she could literally be anywhere on, transport via plants, she could be any plant anywhere on the planet that she has oh. touched before. Then, uh, speaking with Bruce, Communing with Bruce, um, there. She is also interested in what you have hidden, but she is not what I seek. She will be useful, but she does not know yet where it is. She is using me. We shall see. There is another that you will. Um, I mean, crisis averted. 
the spy is gone, so we can carry on now. Bruce continues. Every cat has many whiskers. Every cat four paws. And upon each paw, each cl- each paw has a, each claw its own appendage. There are others. Find them. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just standing, like, perfectly still, just staring into, like, Sebastian's already walking towards healing because you told him to leave you. Yeah. So, uh, s- oh, sorry, are we caught up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, did you see their face? Did you get a good look at them? Like, who we who we dealing with here? Yes, we did see her. She showed her true form. It was. It was a woman. Yes. With red hair. I'm pretty sure it was an owl, Raph. Red hair. What else? Uh, sort of like fox tails. Rudy, it, uh, she reminded me of you. Fox tails, red hair. The queen of thieves. Raina Billy Whitaker, you get over here right now! I shout into the... Into the ether. The echo echoes around. Who? Roll a d6. Your daughter is an owl? Two. (sighs) She might... She doesn't know. She might have thought that these were not friends, and they chased her off. She might have thought that you were in danger, not among friends. You boys, we need to find her right now. There's only one girl I know with red hair and foxtails, and if it ain't her... Rudy, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people in the world that can have red hair and may or may not have foxtails. That look like me? Uh, Raph didn't, I mean, I looked at her. She, actually, yeah, a little. Uh, Rudy, if she is your kin, can you find, can you find her because we have Rudy? Yeah. You find her. Like, <laughs> like teleport to her, or if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Maybe there's another druid around here. But she also carried a pendant uh, of Erwin. Yeah, Erwin. Do I have any knowledge if she's carried this before? This would be new. Erwin. Well, maybe it won't. Maybe it's not her. But she's never... I mean, she's been gone for a while. I haven't never seen her be interested in that stuff before, but it's one of the... it can't be a coincidence. Red hair, fox. She's always had. Especially if you said she she looked a little bit like me. She could be anywhere. What's your daughter? Granddaughter? Daughter. Daughter. Doing out here. Tracking us. <laughs> That's a great question. I would love to know what she's doing out here in the wilderness, near a mountain. Well, if we see any more owls or foxes or whatever, we, you can talk to them. Uh, Rudy, I do have a, I have an idea, but it will have to wait till nightfall. Why does it have to wait till nightfall, right? It just has to. But trust me, tonight we will see. All right. I think we need to just keep going on through here. Like, I'm sure she'll show herself. She's been around, but... Mm-hmm. Ooh. She knows something. She has a lot of things to answer for right now. I'm drawn to her. 
She didn't attack us. No. But she knows something. What? I don't know. You continue traveling the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. You can all roll me another d6. A pair, oh, please. Yeah. One and a one! <laughs> oh! Six and a three. Six and a four. Okay. You got as many sixes as ones, but one of you rolled two ones. Oh, that's hot. What are the odds? That's great. So, oh, no. <laughs> two of you that rolled sixes. You each rolled a six? Yeah. Roll me another d6 each. One. Four. Okay. <laughs> and how fortune turns around. Okay. You continue through the day as the snowstorm wanes slightly as the sun goes down. Walking across a frozen lake, you see several figures walking in the distance towards you. It's a group of, of warriors. Through the storm, you see just their silhouettes for a moment. Sebastian, give me a perception check. <laughs> Put them back on. I get a six. Seems normal. There's five of them. Hmm. Just see them out in the distance. And then you see them beside it. Oh, they're as tall as a tree. Giants. Pluto, come on up front. Now, not all giants mean us harm. We don't know if these are giants from the city or giants from Netherwind. I haven't met a giant that I didn't want to kill. So it's probably really important that you distinguish this really quickly. It's it's complicated. There's there's a lot of complications with the giants in these parts. And they're all from the same clans, so it's really hard to tell which ones are going to try to kill you and which ones uh, aren't. Well, I mean, is there anything to be said for uh, information on giants and Travelers that come across their territory? They're coming closer. Uh, they generally want humans to stay out of their mountain range, uh, which is where we are right now. So uh, we should hide. Where? We're on a frozen lake. As they get closer, something's wrong with one of them. It's their gait is stilted and halted. And as it comes forward, you can see that the giant has three heads and three arms. All of them have strange mutations, mouths on their bodies, extra vestigial limbs, eyes where they shouldn't be. And the three of these massive frost giants lumber forward moaning in their ancient and terrible tongue, brandishing their great weapons as they howl in a confused and insane rage. Pluto, this is worse. You can kill these giants. Great. And that's where we'll end um... for tonight. We're gonna kill giants! <laughs> Yay! Hopefully! Be ready next time for all six of your characters in combat. You still have your temporary hit points, right? I have five. five. Me too! Okay, good. <sighs> well, an interesting journey to say the least. A big thank you to our players, Jill, Kelly, and Joe, for playing both sets of characters tonight. Oh man. <laughs> oh man. And a huge thank you to Kyle for all of the amazing work he does behind the scenes, uh, running the show and just being pretty. 
And a large thank you to Monty Martin for running such a good game tonight. Thank you. Um, teleportation. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> On the chart it says like <laughs> described. It's got yeah, a stone. Yeah. Listen. Oh my gosh. Listen, on paper it looked like fun or more fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in our game uh, tonight we use a variety of incredible assets produced by talented artists. Uh, they've graciously given us permission to use them in our stream games and uh, you can use them in your games too, and we hope you go out and check out some of these amazing creators. Uh, the uh, music by Tabletop Audio. Uh, we have, uh, I know you didn't get to see it tonight, but some uh, miniatures by WizKids, uh, terrain by Dwarven Forge, and also stuff that's uh, printed uh, by the wondrous Monty Martin um, with player character artwork by Elizabeth Perot. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store. You can find all of your favorite Dungeon Deeds t-shirts, including Yes, 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 uh, Dragon Force. Uh, take a look at bit.ly slash Dungeon Deeds merch. Our videos and live streams are made possible because we have an amazing Patreon community supporting our work. If you enjoy what we do here on YouTube, Twitch, and elsewhere, please consider becoming a patron of our show by following the links in the description below. We also have a phenomenal Discord community exclusive for our patrons, so you can join us on Discord if you are on our Patreon, and you can chat with all of us about anything tabletop role-playing game related, or anything else. You can also join in on our writer's rooms and Q&As, which will be coming back soon. And um, yeah, come hang out. We also got new videos coming every other Tuesday and every Thursday on YouTube, so check that out over there. Be sure to join us next Tuesday when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio-only podcast. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time as we decide the fate of Drakenheim.